Hi everyone, my name is Lauren and this is Skylar, Carter, and Colin. Our company is Stripe Banana and we are here today to present you with our brand new app, iSpeech. Have you ever noticed that children always seem to be on social media or gaming apps and don't seem to use any other kind of app? We have too. That's why we created iSpeech, an app all about the world around us. It's geared towards elementary and middle school children in order to encourage them to learn and explore more about the world around them. iSpeech has there are three different parts of it. It has a learning section where the user can simply learn about the animals. It has an interactive game where the user can control the flight of a flying squirrel and try to put it on the appropriate animal. And it also has a part where the user can try to identify native Virginian plant animals. The first thing that we did with the research was um, with the app, we need to make sure that the app is kid friendly since our app is geared towards um, younger children. So we looked at many apps, um, like bird finder apps, just informational apps to see what apps geared towards adults have with the information. Once we had that, we decided to see what we needed to make sure that our app attracted children. With that, um, I contacted, as we researched her, I contacted a couple different wildlife centers, including Shenandoah Wildlife Center and the Fisherville Wildlife Center. They replied saying that the app was a great idea and that as we were already playing for, just to make sure that the app was geared towards children and to make sure that we had the facts correct and that it was entertaining, entertaining to them. Our focus group, um, we decided to contact Rutgers Elementary School in Greene County and with one of the STEM teachers I contacted, we decided to set up um, the app testing with one of the first grade classes. We planned to um, only let them test the gaming portion of our app because that was the main focus to make sure that the app was successful in teaching them as well as entertaining them while learning the information. Some of the results for the games was that with the flying squirrel game, it was confusing at first for the first graders, but once we told them how to work the app, they loved it. They um, loved playing the game. They um, liked moving around and finding out which animal was which. With our um, scavenger app, they liked finding the animals that were hidden in the picture, and they were um, very excited seeing the facts and that they were able to find the um, pictures. I'll be showing a demonstration of the app. Which you can skip if you hit that home button. So um, I'll start with our about screen, which shows our mission to uh, spread environmental awareness to younger kids through an interactive app. And this is the about screen for our company, which includes our contact info in case anyone has questions or uh, concerns about our app, like they find a bug or something. Uh, here are the directions to our scavenger game as well as our flying squirrel game so that you can play them properly. I'll start with the uh, flying squirrel game for the directions for it. You can direct the flying squirrel to the correct animal, which you can learn about under the education tab. I'll get there in a second. Upon getting the correct one, it shows you uh, information about it. You can continue or return to the home page. I'll show you what happens if we uh, choose the incorrect one. If you choose incorrect, you have the option to continue to play again or return to the home screen. Uh, the other game we have is this scavenger animal spotter game where you click on animals and take various pictures and it gives you their uh, info. Again, hit the home button takes you back. And if you ever want to learn about the animals, you hit the learn tab shows you these uh, various animals that you can click on, and it gives you the same info as if you were to uh, have the correct one game. So although the app turned out very well, there's a few things we'd like to add in the 2.0 version. The first of which is the wider variety of larger amount of animals. No 
And with that large amount of analysts, we'd like to include a search function to sift through the large amount of quantities and find the one you'd like to look at, look, learn about. And we'd also like to add the ability for the user to select their region they live in. There'll be different animals based on that region. Also, a different game to replace the flying squirrel game that will be based on that region. So in our case, we have the eastern flying squirrel. In another region, there might be like maybe a bird flying down the street. And they could direct the bird to the correct one. We'd also like to add a difficulty setting, as a lot of the younger kids would like to have harder, have a harder game. So it would be, be more difficult for them to complete it. And there could be variable difficult settings based on the age group. They might want to play easier or harder. And we also like to add links in the animal about screens to learn more about the animal, maybe through Wikipedia or a different type of source. And yeah, that's about it. Are there any questions? What ways do you plan on using So we could use more camouflaged animals. So um, there's one, there's like a copperhead snake that was hidden in a tree. That one was more difficult. It wasn't shown in the demonstration, but it was more difficult. It could be added to a higher, a higher difficulty setting. And then, yeah, they're just camouflaged animals. We could increase the speed of the flying squirrel and also just make the plants animals in that section more obscure that they wouldn't know less about. And yeah, that's how we can change difficulty. 